Hi guys, welcome back to the next video on RabbitMQ. In this video, we're going to do the C Sharp implementation of the request reply pattern. We covered the conceptual overview of this pattern in a previous video, so if you haven't seen that video, please check it out first. We also covered a Python implementation in the previous video, so if that is your language of choice, please check out that video instead of this one. So we're here in Visual Studio Code, and as usual, all the code used in these examples will be on my GitHub with the link in the description. We've started off with two folders, a folder for a client and a server, and we've called them client and server instead of producer and consumer, as both the client and the server in this example will both consume and publish messages onto RabbitMQ. So we look at our client code first, and remember in the request reply pattern, the client is responsible for publishing requests onto RabbitMQ and then consuming replies from the server. So a lot of what we have here will be the exact same. As usual, the way we create our factory connection and channel will all be the same. So the first thing we'll have to change that is rather than creating an explicit letterbox queue, we'll create a reply queue that's exclusive and also the name of the queue is created by RabbitMQ itself. So to do that, we leave out the queue parameter. We can also get rid of these parameters and also class exclusive true. And then we want to save this reply queue in a variable so we can say var reply queue and that's our reply queue setup so this is the queue that we will pass along from our client to our server and tell the server we want to receive our replies on this queue we'll also need to declare a request queue so we can say camel.queue.clare again and this time we can explicitly declare it as request queue and this one can be exclusive false and this queue is the queue that we'll be sending our requests to so the client will send its request onto this queue and the server will consume messages from this queue so next we can set up our consumer to consume messages from the reply queue so again we set it up in the way we're familiar with here we'll make some small changes so instead of saying receive new message we'll just say reply received And in our basic consume, we obviously don't want to consume off the letterbox queue. We want to consume off the reply queue. So we'll say reply queue dot queue name. We can auto acknowledge and we can pass in the consumer that we've created above. So once we have that set up, we actually want to publish our request into the request queue. So to do this, we can first define the message we want to send. So we'll say var message equals can I request a reply. And we'll encode that using UTF-8 so far. Body equals encoding dot UTF-8 dot get bytes and pass in the message. And then we can say channel dot basic publish to publish it. We want to publish to the default exchange in this case. We could publish to a different exchange or an exchange we've explicitly created, but to keep this example simple, we'll just publish the default exchange. And then as the routing key, we'll give the name of the queue, the request queue, and we'll pass null as the properties for now, but we will have to populate some properties as we'll see in a second, and also the body of the message. Let me just say started client here. So let's go back and talk about the properties. So as we saw in the previous video, we have to set some properties when using the request reply pattern. The first thing we need to set is the reply to property. This tells the server that is processing the message what queue it needs to send the reply onto. We also need to set the correlation ID or the message ID properties, which allow the client to determine for which request a reply is for. So to do this, we say var properties is equal to channel that create basic properties and this will create a basic properties objects for us to use and then we can set properties that reply to on this and we can set that to the queue we want to reply to and that is the queue we declared above here the reply queue dot queue name and then we also want to set the correlation id so we can do this again by using properties dot correlation id is equal to guid dot new guid so this will generate a basic identifier or a unique identifier for our message and then to string to create it as a string and then of course we want to pass these properties when publishing the message 
So we'll simply, instead of saying null for properties, we'll pass in the properties we've created. And after we publish the message, we'll just simply write out to the console that we've published something. So console.write line. We'll say sending request. And we'll also print out the correlation ID of that request. So that's more or less it from our client point of view. Next, we will look at how to implement the server to consume these requests and then publish an appropriate reply, which is then in turn consumed by the client. Okay, let's jump into the implementation of our server.cs code. So again, we start here with some very basic code that we had before from our very simple producer. So let's edit this a little bit to consume our requests and publish our replies. So like we discussed in the previous video, we also need to declare our request queue in our server in case it starts before the client. So we can simply copy that in from our client code. We don't need to declare another queue here as this is the only queue that we will be consuming off in this example. But what we do need to do is we need to set this server up to consume off this request queue and publish a reply on the reply queue when it receives one. So to do this, we first create our consumer. So consumer equals new eventing basic consumer. Pass in the channel. And we need to add a using up here. So using RabbitMQ. Client.events. Should be a capital Q. And then we can say consumer. So we'll add our event here. So consumer received. And inside this block here, we will describe what we actually want to do when we receive a message on the request queue. So the first thing we'll probably do is just log out that we received a message. So console top right line. Receive request. And we can also print out the correlation ID. So EA dot basic properties dot correlation ID. So this will tell us we've received a request with this correlation ID. Then we will have a reply message. We'll just simply say, this is your reply. And again, we'll just add the correlation ID in here. And we need to encode that reply, obviously. So body equals encoding dot utf8 dot get bytes reply message and then finally we need to publish this reply message back onto the broker using the reply to queue that was sent in the request so to do this we can say channel basic publish use the default exchange so leave this blank but then as the routing key we want to pass the reply to queue so basic properties again, instead of correlation ID, we'll use reply to. We don't need to send any properties this time, although we could add the correlation ID in the properties or a message ID in the properties. And also then of course the body of the reply. So that set us up on what we wanna do when we receive a message on the request queue. The next thing we wanna do is we can first delete this and then we wanna set up our consume to actually consume. So we can say channel basic consume. We want to consume off the queue called request queue because that's the queue that we expect our request to come in. We can set auto ACK is true and the consumer is the consumer we declared above this consumer here. And finally, instead of saying console right line here, we can just say rekey to keep the server open. So that's it from our server and our client code. Quite a simple setup here. So let's open up some terminal windows and run our client on our server to see if they do what we expect. So let's CD into our server and run it using .NET run. So that should be our server started. Let's open another terminal window and CD into our client and then run our client using .NET run. So we can see here that our console has logged out some information. So on our client, we see that we've sending requests with a correlation ID B47C7. We started our client and we've also received a reply with the correlation ID B47C7. And on our server side, 
we've received the request B47C7. So we can see that the same correlation ID is used when sending, processing, and receiving our message. So thanks for watching this video, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and leave a comment if you want to.